back, everybody. This is Team Turn 3, and uh, today I'm joined by... Neven. Ivan. Max. As always, I'm your host, Jesse, and uh, I say we just jump right into it. Uh, we have a bit of a special episode for you guys today. We're playing a four times Protean Hulk game. So we're all playing a slightly different flavor of the Protean Hulk deck. I'm playing the four-color Flash Hulk version. Niven is going to be playing two-color Hulk. You're playing Sultai Hulk, and you're playing classic Absent Hulk. Um, so yeah, so I mean, we're all playing a slightly different take on the deck, um, and we're gonna battle it out to see which one is the best, or you know, who gets luckiest. And uh, so, I guess that's about it. I won the die roll, so I'll, I'll be going first. We've taken all our Morgan decisions already, and let's just get started. Hey guys, Jesse here, and today I'm playing a four-color Protean Hulk deck featuring Timna and Thrasios. Um, this deck is heavily inspired by Ten Roses' list, um, Walking Ball. Um, I've made a few changes just because I know that I was going to be up against four uh, Protean Hulk decks today, so I wanted to have slightly, uh, a slightly better fighting chance with some specific hate cards. Um, now, this deck is very interesting. It has three sort of very compact inter interacting win conditions. Um, the first one obviously involves Protean Hulk itself, and when it dies, it effectively brings out the Cephalid Breakfast combo involving Nomad's End Core and Cephalid Illusionist, um, which can mill your library and ultimately let you bring back Laboratory Maniac and win through that route. Um, another way to win is using Hermit Druid, which is a very, very similar win condition as you might imagine, whereby you're milling out your library. Um, in this case, theoretically, you could go off with Laboratory Maniac, but you can also go off with Necrotic Ooze. Um, as many Hermit, Hermit Druid decks do. The final win condition is uh, a new one. It's the Vizier of Remedies uh, Devoted Druid combo to get infinite mana, um, which allows you to channel that into Thrasios, draw your deck, and then use the final piece of the puzzle, the Walking Ballista, which sort of ties a lot of the different win conditions together in this deck and lets you just shoot down your opponents on the spot. All right, so the first hand that I drew this game was a Laboratory Maniac, Deathrite Shaman, Swan Song, Misty Rainforest, a Pact of Negation, a Temple Garden, and a Chrome Mox. So this hand is interesting because it's got a mix of interaction and uh, you know a bit of ramp, but um, having the Laboratory Maniac in hand is kind of an issue. And you know the other problem with this hand is that Pact of Negation is not so good early on, um, and it doesn't really have like a clear plan of where to go other than casting a Timna. So I decided to uh, try to find something that had a little bit more of a clear direction. Um, and I mulliganed into a Sylvan Tutor, a Verdant Catacombs, a Flicker Wisp, a Tundra, a Scalding Tarn, a Windswept Heath, and a Sol Ring. Now, this hand is a little bit heavy on lands, but uh, the Sylvan Tutor in hand and the Sol Ring are both particularly nice as potential turn one plays. Um, I kept this hand, and ultimately I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get a Hermit Druid down on turn two. Um, but we'll see how the game goes from here. Hi, and even here. Today I'm going to be playing a mid-range Marin deck with a Protein Hulk as my win con. The idea is to slow down the game with uh, some Staxi pieces, gain advantage through Marin's uh, experience counters, and then when I have control of the board, I'll actually bring out Protein Hulk, which would look for Frix and Delver, plus a Sec Outlet. Delver brings back Protein Hulk. Protein Hulk brings out Micaeus, Walking Ballista, and then I would proceed to machine gun the table. All right, so today I'm playing Tasker the Golden Fang. Uh, so this is a soul tie version of Protean Hawk. The goal of the deck is very similar to the black and green version, where we try to get to get a Protean Hawk in order to fetch a Micaeus together with a Walking Ballista and a Sack Outlet in order to kill uh, all the players with infinite damage. Now the way to do that is very interesting because blue gives us a lot of card draw, a lot of cycling, a lot of, you know, just efficient way of finding the cards we need. And together with the black, we have a lot of reanimation with the green and the black together. We have a lot of tutoring. So we should be able to get uh, our pieces together very well. And then I decided to pick Tassiger over Mimeoplasm mainly because uh, Tassiger allows me to reuse some of the pieces uh, in my deck and also to dig deeper by milling myself. And to discuss my opener, so my first hand got mulliganed away because it was a Worldly Tutor, Birds of Paradise, Dryad Arbor, Fluster Storm, Demonic Tutor, Pack of Negation, and a Priest of Titania. Now obviously, I only have one land, we don't really get far before a few turns, so I decided to mulligan it away, take the free mull, 
the second hand was uh, an island, an uh, underground river, uh, misty rainforest, and a scalding tarn. And on the other side, I had uh, an eternal witness, sylvan safekeeper, and a green sun zenith. So again, a very slow hand. I could get some ramp, sylvan safekeeper for, for protection, eternal witness. In my hand, at least, only got back fetches. The hand doesn't really do anything except accelerate and play slow mana with lands. So I decided to take my chance into a hand of six cards. And then uh, my hand of six was Woodland Cemetery, an island, an altar of dementia, brainstorm, shred memories, and a sylvan library. So a lot uh, more efficient. We see two lands, so en enough to uh, at least play the sylvan library on turn two, get started, brainstorm, shred memory to for card advantage. Altar of dementia means we already have a sack outlet. And then uh, I scried another island at the bottom. Decided to keep this hand was like it's gonna be a bit slower, but we should get there by turn three or four. Yeah, Max today I'm playing Timna and Sidor Kondo, Protean Hulk. It's very similar to Abs and Boonweaver, uh, except that it runs Protean Hulk instead of Boonweaver Giant because it's more efficient. <laughs> the goal is to get some early hate bears to stop the other faster combo decks from comboing, then get uh, Protean Hulk. On a battlefield in a way to kill it to tutor a combination of creature that goes infinite so my first hand was two planes a marsh flats pattern of rebirth very macabre altar of dementia and cabal therapy so i've mulliganed that hand because it's just way too slow uh, second hand was a lana war elves and arbor elf a stony silence an eldritch evolution a lana war waste and a nerid meza so Probably you should have kept that hand, even though it doesn't do much. It gets a pretty early Timna that can get us uh, some good card advantage. That's probably better than an average six card hand. Uh, but I've mulliganed it anyway, hoping to get a great six. And I drew a reanimate, a bloom tender, a Parix and Tower, a Nadal on of Rhetoric, a Naven Mind Sensor, and a Bayou which is a pretty bad hand, and I have no good reason to keep that hand, but decided to roll with it. So I'll take a draw. I think more of an experiment of, as to why they shouldn't have banned Protein Hulk. Well, I think, I think <laughs> all the competitive EDH like aspect of it knows why they shouldn't have the unbanned Hulk. I'm going to go fetch and why they should ban a green hand. source, <laughs> and I'm going to cast Sylvan Tutor. And that'll be my turn. I'm going to put Prote uh, not Protein Hulk. Sorry. As much as I want to. It's like turn two Protein Hulk. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, Proto's got a turn zero Prod Hulk, uh, Flash Hulk on Grand camera. Prix. Grand Prix. Okay, so Jesse's turn. I will play Marsh Flats, which I will sack for a Bayou. It's a Hermit Druid on top, by the way. All right. Yes, Chromox exiling Abrupt Decay. Bold. And Crypt. Wow, that's quite a start. So, Bayou, Mana Crypt, Chrome Mox. That's half his hand gone. And that's Marin. Turn one, Marin. Seems good. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I'm impressed. <laughs> Alright, Niven, there we go. Turn. Yep. Alright. Okay, boys and girls. Um. They're going to be the most fantastic play, but we're going to start with a Woodland Cemetery. Go ahead. What's that doing in the deck? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, it's usually really good. <laughs> uh, by you and past turn. So I will draw a Hermit Druid. Uh, can you come in? Yeah, sure. Cut me such a great hand last year. <laughs> you know, I thought one fast land for sure is going to come in on tap at some point. But... Uh, no, it wasn't my opener. I'm going to fetch again. So yeah, uh, they will then play a... Sol Ring and Hermitrid. And I'll say go. Right, untap, crypt. So evens, I take damage. What are you fetching for? Uh, I'm going to go with a Bayou. I'm fine. No reason to play islands. Play Woodland Cemetery. This is better than yours. Yeah. 
<laughs> I can see that. <laughs> uh, declare attacks. I don't play ad nauseum. You don't play ad nauseum? <laughs> I'll believe that. <laughs> for once. In another life. I'm going to attack you for three. Ah, uh, uh, That's still the other life hurting me again. <laughs> uh, time for two. The second main. Three. Did you roll for a crypt? Yep. Roll to five. Oh, it's just true. Uh, I knew that was coming. <laughs> Everyone sacks a creature. You sure you didn't want to get more value off of that? No, 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 no. I think I, I think it's on his job. I get one experience. Uh, you have to sack a creature too, though. Oh, uh, sack himself. <laughs> yeah, <it> makes sense. <laughs> really? You don't want a zombie on the table? And all right, so on tap. So end step. Proceed to turn. Execution back to my hand. Busted. All right. So I'll go ahead and untap. Then draw. Uh, play an island explaining the uh, woodland cemetery with this very awkward combination of starting hand lands. And we're going to go ahead with a Sylvan library. Go ahead. Out of turn. I'm going to cast Tantum. Hey. Hey, guys, the game might be over. <laughs> <laughs> does this resolve? Yes, it does. No response. Oh, he's got a smile on his face. <laughs> Draw. Protean Hulk in the graveyard. Cast. Reanimate. Targeting Protean Hulk. <laughs> wow. It's fine, guys. It's not an ETB effect. <laughs> guys, I would like to remind the fact, I would like to remind everybody that the rules committee has stated already that uh, graveyard, you know, interactions have become really proficient. So it's fine because everybody so, yeah, now has Protean ways Hulk to stop. is not a problem, right? No, exactly. Yeah, so you can it, have it. I can have it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Look, look at me. I lose seven life by doing that. <laughs> yeah, it's clearly so, a bad play. I mean, why are you doing towers? this? <laughs> <laughs> Easy life. Activated, sacrificed it. I'm going to use uh, this die as, a, as an F6 button. I'm going to click right. on it. So trigger. Anybody else want to F6 with me? <laughs> as we... No one wants to F6 with you. Uh, Guys, are we team turn two? Yeah, boy. <laughs> Channel. <laughs> Team Protean Hulk. Hulk. <laughs> Team Hulk. I mean, it's not over yet, because don't forget, anyone could respond with a fairy macabre. <laughs> uh, so I'll get this Viserys here and, like, not even That's, that's your entire uh, yep. allotment. I could get Dried Arbor. All right, Karmic Guide is targeting Protean Hulk. Um, I have no response yet. Right. Sacrifice it. <laughs> F6. <laughs> 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 so the difference between uh, the difference between Boon Weaver Giant, of course, and Protean Hulk is you just need Protean Hulk to die the one time. Yeah, and I then he brings his own I sack out. I could do that with Boon Weaver. Nope. But I can do that with Prods. Yeah. When you make a tier one deck better, you know who'd have thought <laughs> that would the addition of Walking Ballista in the deck lists. Uh, so many turn two wins. So many turn specifically two wins. in Tomb Reanimate. Sacrifice Safi. The targeting Karmic Guide. Trigger. You lose a life, I gain a life. Sacrifice Karmic Guide. Trigger, trigger. You lose another life, I gain another life. I feel targeted. Comes back. <laughs> trigger. Target. Safi. Does anybody have yeah. any interaction at any point? Nope. I broke my F6. All right. Well, that was a nice quick game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, everybody. Uh, I'm going to have right. to explain why I kept a really bad hand, but top deck and tomb. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you keep a hand thinking you're going to top deck and tomb. Yeah, definitely. So, all things considered, I regret mulliganing my second hand, because my six card hand was pretty bad, but I top decked an end tomb and won on the second turn. Well... Entomb Reanimate is a pretty uh, classic combo, and if you can get it in Commander, it's it tends to be even stronger because I mean, sure in Legacy you get the turn one Grizzle Brand and all of that, but you know that that only wins like ninety percent of the time. Whereas in Commander, it's like one hundred percent of the time. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I'd be pretty salty if it was a casual player. This happened. As a casual player. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, man. I had a, I, I thought my hand was good. I was like, my, my mana is kind of slow, but that's fine. You know, turn two Sylvan Library into... I had a tutor in hand. I had two card draw cards, right? And I was like, all right, you know. 
acceleration, like a cardra, cardra, tutoring, a bit of slow mana, but we should get there. But no, sometimes you play your turn two and then uh, you lose on the other guy's turn two. <laughs> I'm just oh trying to slow down the guys. Oh my god. It's it's interesting though. This game uh, really does highlight how uh, Protean Hulk is considerably stronger than Boonweaver Giant though. Oh, um, absolutely. Just definitely. Yeah, the, the potential for, for turn two and even turn one wins is quite a bit higher with that card compared to good old Giant. But uh, yeah, I mean... If, he's, if, a, he's a crazy good creature for a, crazy good creature-based combo decks. <laughs> Like, he's very strong. I don't think he should necessarily be re-banned, just because there's other cards that might be higher on the priority list, surprisingly. Ad nauseam. <laughs> <laughs> Can we edit a little rainbow behind this and do it again, just all together now? Ad nauseam. All right. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's probably cards that are more dangerous than, than Protean Hulk, all things considered. I mean, it just so happens that... Uh, like everyone was tapped out when you went for it. It was turn two. Yeah, Storm yeah. could do a turn two too. Oh yeah, because of, of Adnos. Yeah. yeah, So it's it's not more crazy than like Storm to no, no, turn no. two. I don't need Adnos to turn two, but I get your point. <laughs> for sure, but I mean, it it definitely creates a new archetype of deck within competitive commander, yeah, which definitely. is good because the the format is starting to get a little bit more homogenous with all of the Thrasios X decks. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm happy to see, you know, Boonweaver, um, former, formerly Boonweaver decks getting a little bit of also a leg up. Formerly Carador. Formerly <laughs> Carador decks. Um, and then, you know, this, this whole new breed of uh, interesting combo decks. Um, and it sort of remains to be seen what the best shell for uh, Protean Hulk will be. I, I'm still sort of the opinion that I, I really like the Staxi mid-range shell for it. Kind yeah, of like too. this. Um, potentially just splashing blue for a couple for, of cards for a couple of including cards including flash makes sense yeah exactly um, yeah, I agree we're, but, uh, we're all playtesting a lot before we build these decks and uh, we all went with different colors combination tried to break them but we all pretty much got to the conclusion that but red is probably the most efficient way to uh, to get around with it right and uh, you know obviously um, for, for today's video we wanted to sort of have a demonstration of lots of different sort of deck archetypes that you could build for Protean Hulk, you know, not not just build the deck that we necessarily would play if we were playing uh, at, a, at a local game store or something like that, oh, or a absolutely. tournament. Also, I mean, there's the, there's the spikiest version of the deck, but it's always interesting to see, you know, the variants. Of course. Like, there's a lot of green-black taxi decks that are really good. There's Nan, there's Moran, there's Gerard to a certain extent. They're all interesting. They have their different specs. Some of them are arguably stronger or more efficient you know, sharper than other ones, but it's always interesting to have variants. Yep, I agree. And I mean, if no one else has anything to add, I guess we could just leave it at that. All right, this has been another Team Turn 3 production. Uh, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.